Stuka Joe here. And from what we've seen in the last turn, the 1860s, the Russians have established control in Bokhara, liberated Afghanistan. The British have desperately plugged uh, holes in the sense of preventing further advances into Punjab. But there are still some uh, areas where the Russians can continue their advance. The British have a shortage of officers on the map. Not so for the Russians. And still, Kashgaria is not open to any of the rivals in this game. And we need to watch out for this card, the Martini Henry Rifles and Krupp Guns card. The event for this card ensures a die roll of one during battle, and it is only playable in this turn, in the 1870s. So now we proceed to 1870, turn five of six. These are the officers that enter in this turn for the British. Roberts with a strong tactics rating of three and Cavalgari. For the Russians, Skobelev also with a tactics rating of three but encased in a golden box. That means that he can apply that tactics rating against the desert attrition die roll. So instead of 2d6 minus one, it's 2d6 plus two. And the Russians also have Kaufman and Stolyatov, which have decent tactics ratings. Roberts is placed at Sindh in Baluchistan, where he will lead four British strength points. While Cavalgari goes to Peshawar, where the British have one strength point. Skobelev will start at Orenburg, where the Russians intend to form a column and move it across desert terrain and take advantage of his special ability. Kaufmann is placed in Turkestan, where he will provide a better tactics rating than Igniatev in case they want to continue to reduce the fortress at Tashkent. And finally, Stolyatov is assigned to Bokhara, where the Russians have one strength point. So uh, we have shuffled the deck and dealt seven cards to each of the sides. Let's take a look at the cards that they were dealt. So the British don't have one, two, but three campaign cards, which is very rare. One emissary card, and not one, two, but three spoiler cards. This is a really weird hand at this stage in the game. That's, there's not a lot of uh, diplomatic play because you can't play emissary cards on conquered vassal states, just unconquered ones. So it seems that uh, the British have a surplus of spoiler cards, so they can discard two cards for two new ones, and they will discard two of the spoiler cards. And they pick up a Rebellion card and the Flashman card once again. Let's take a look at the Russian hand. One campaign card. A hero card, and remember that in this particular version, hero cards had a uh, value of three, and we're playing with that caveat. Two Persian persuasion cards, an imperial commitments card, pen mightier than sword, and one spoiler card. And the Russians find no use for these Persian persuasion cards because Persia is neutral at this time. So they will discard both. They draw an informant and emissary card. Note that the informant card is a counter to the play of the shooting leave card. So on with the action and we move on to round one. And each of the sides selects a card and let's take a look at what they are. The Russians played a hero card which in this game again has a value of three and the British campaign card with value of four. So the Russians have the initiative and they play first. So this being a reaction card, it can only be played either for reinforcement or for actions. And the Russians will play it for reinforcement. So they will receive three strength points. And these are placed at the Russian base at Orenburg. 
Now, on the last turn, the Russians had liberated Afghanistan, and when that happens, they have one round to move out. It's the next round after liberation. The liberation took place on round five of last turn. So they had until this first round, and obviously they used the round to reinforce uh, and bring new units. So now Afghanistan is conquered. So we place Russian control markers on the other spaces, Ghazni and Kandahar, and discontent markers because uh, this... Uh, Vassal state came to be a Russian proxy by way of military conquest, but now uh, a rebellion card may be played to incite another rebellion, and this time not against the British, but against the Russians in Afghanistan. So it's British round one, and they will play this campaign card for reinforcements. And the British receive four strength points that are placed in their base at Delhi. Now we move on to round number two and each of the sides selects a card. The Russians play a campaign card and the British the flashman card so the British have the initiative. And the British play the flashman card first for the event. So flashman appears in Delhi where the British have four strength points. And now the British play the card for its actions. First action sees Flashman march his column from Delhi to Lahore and Punjab, and there is no loss from attrition. Second action is to move two strength points from Bombay to Karachi and Baluchistan, and there's no possible loss from attrition. Now, as the third action, if you're following the walkthrough, Roberts marches on Kandahar, where there are some rebels here that rebelled against the British originally. But uh, according to the final rules, when the Russians liberated Afghanistan, all rebels uh, were removed. So that's why there's no rebels there. The thing with the Russians is that they overstayed their welcome, and they did not leave Afghanistan during their next round. And that's why there are these Russian control flags with discontent markers. So, to make a long story short, Roberts, different from the walkthrough, will not advance into Kandahar at this time, and the British will forego that third action. And the third action, Roberts, with his column of four strength points, moves from Sindh in Baluchistan into Kandahar in southern Afghanistan. And they are going to huh, liberate the Afghans this time. No loss from attrition. Now it's the Russian second round, and they play their campaign card for reinforcements. So they receive four more strength points at Orenburg, bringing their total there to seven. A word of caution here, I've been following the script, and I've noticed that at times when reinforcements are placed, uh, for example, a, a particular number of reinforcements are placed, and then one or two rounds later, when they are moved, you have one more than what uh, was originally placed. And now I discover why that is. When reinforcements are placed, each of the sides has to check the number of vassal states that they have as proxies. That is, that they control, they roll 1d6, and if the result is that number of uh, proxies or less, they receive an additional point of reinforcement. And in this case, that the Russians received four, we roll 1d6, and the result is a two. The Russians have as proxies Bokhara, Kiva, and Turkomans, three, so uh, that is less than the number of proxies they have, so they receive an extra strength point. Now we proceed to round number three. Each side selects a card. The Russians play pen mightier than sword, the British rebellion, so the Russians have the initiative. They'll play the card for its two actions first, and then they'll leave the card into space for cards for lasting effects, because in the next round, round four, the British will not be able to play any card for action, only for reinforcement. So the first of two actions is for the Russians 
to march Skobelev and eight strength points at Orenburg through desert terrain to Kazala. The desert attrition die roll is six, minus one, five, plus three for Skobelev's special ability is eight, and Skobelev has eight strength points, so all are safe. Now Skobelev continues with the uh, second action and marches on Turkestan. And uh, the Russians roll a regular attrition die roll of six plus two, eight, again, eight is the number of uh, strength points that marched, so all are safe. And it seems that the Russians have all it takes to uh, reduce that fortress at Tashkent. And on to the British third round, and their card is Rebellion, and they will play the card first for the event. So the British have to designate one target uh, vassal state that is part of the uh, Russians camp, and they'll designate Afghanistan. They roll 1d6, and if the result is three or more, that vassal state immediately rebels. So we roll 1d6. The roll is a six, so the Afghans rebel against the Russians. And now the British roll 2d6 to determine the number of rebel strength points that appear. And it is 10. And the British decide where the rebels appear. And it is in Kabul where the Russians have five strength points under the command of Chernayev. And uh, both sides will roll simultaneously because first round rebels roll first always as well as imperial troops. So we roll 1d6 for the rebels and 1d6 for the Russians. So the Russians roll a 6 modified to a 2 because of Chernayev's tactical rating. 5 minus 2, a loss of 3 strength points on the rebels. The rebels roll a 3 modified to a zero, and they have a total of 10 uh, strength points. So they cause a loss of 10 on the Russian uh, force, which is wiped out. And because uh, all Russian strength points were eliminated as a result of combat with rebels, Chernayev doesn't get to uh, save his own life or retreat. He is eliminated. Now, because the rebels have liberated Afghanistan, their reason to exist has ceased, so they disappear. We remove them from the map, as well as the Russian control flags and discontent markers. And Ayub also goes away. And Afghanistan is now back to neutral status. So the card was played for its event, and the British had a chance to uh, see how the rebellion uh, fared very well actually but uh, they're not going to let the Afghans remain independent or neutral right so now they're going to play the card for its three actions for the first action Flashman and his four British strength points march into Peshawar where they pick up Cavalgari and his uh, sole British strength point and for the second action, Flashman's column invades Afghanistan. Entering into Kabul, and that invasion triggers the appearance of the 10 strength points of the Afghan army. The Russian player decides where the Afghan army is placed. There's not much of a choice. If it's not placed in Kabul, um, Afghanistan will fall again into British hands. So all 10 are placed in Kabul, and we have a combat situation. The British roll first. And the British roll a 5, modified by Flashman's tactics rating to a 3. They have 5 strength points. 5 minus 3 causes a loss of 2 Afghan strength points. So we remove the Afghan losses. The Afghans fire back. They have 8 strength points and roll 3d6. They rolled a 7, and that causes a loss of one strength point on the British force. So we remove the losses on the British side. Because the Afghans suffered more losses, they have to retreat. And they do so to Ghazni, where they used to have a fortress, but no more. 
British Rule for Attrition, 6 plus 2, 8, and they suffer no losses in that respect. The British have conquered Afghanistan, so we remove the Afghan army and place British control markers at Ghazni and Kandahar, as well as discontent markers in all three spaces. And the British suffer no loss as a result of attrition. Now we proceed to round number four, and the Russians can only play a card to reinforce, not for action, because of the pen mightier than sword, a Russian card. So now, let's take a look at the cards that each side selected. The Russians played Imperial Commitments and the British a campaign card, so the Russians have the initiative. The Russians play this card, Imperial Commitments, first for its event, and the British have to transfer half fractions rounded up. They have 13 strength points outside of the British Raj. Fractions rounded up means that seven have to be transferred back to their home country fortress, that is Delhi. So the British will transfer one of the strength points that they have here in Karachi, in Baluchistan, and three of the strength points that they have here in Sindh, also in Baluchistan. So far we've transferred four of the seven strength points. Two of the four that are presently in Kabul. And one of the two that are in Merv. And the card further reads that after said transfer we eliminate half rounded up of all Imperial strength points in the fortress that just received the transfers. So seven strength points were transferred to Delhi, now we eliminate four. And that leaves only three. And now the Russians play the two actions. The first action, the Russians march Skobelev and his column of eight strength points into Tashkent in Kokan to battle it out with the uh, eight remaining strength points of the fortress there. The roll is a five, and we reduce it by three for Skovalev's tactical rating to two. Eight strength points, minus two. Six strength points are lost by the fortress. The fortress has eight, so now, with a loss of six more, it only has a strength of two left. And we won't even roll because uh, three dice rolled by the fortress will not be less than two. So, Skobelev did not manage to completely destroy the fortress, so he has to march back to Turkestan. And uh, attrition does not affect the column. The Russians have one more action that they can execute, but they will pass on doing so. So it's British round number four, and because of play of pen mightier than sword by the Russians in the prior round, they can only use this card for a reinforcement. Consequently, the British receive four additional strength points at Delhi. Britain has four proxies, that is, vassal states under its control, Herat, Afghanistan, Punjab, and Baluchistan. So we roll 1d6, and if the roll is equal or less to that number, they receive one extra point of reinforcement. But the roll is a 5, so no additional reinforcements are received. And on we go to the last round of this turn. Each of the sides picks a card. And they both selected an emissary card because the die roll is even the British have the initiative. The British will play the card first for its event. The British select the Turkomans, a vassal state of at least uh, three spaces. It has four. It is unconquered, so it qualifies for emissary card play. And the emissary will be the Flashman. So he appears at, at Gioktepi. Let's see if the Russians have a spoiler and if they have one, if they will play one. The Russians do have a spoiler card and they will play it. So the Russians select one officer to be immediately sent to Gioktepi. 
The Russians pick Ignatiev, currently at Turkestan. So he is transferred to Giok Tepi. And now the British have to roll a 5 plus 2 for Flashman's diplomatic rating of 2, minus 1 for Ignatiev's diplomatic rating for a net plus 1. The British roll a lucky 6, modified to a 7. So the attempt is successful. Nobody ever hears anything else about Ignatiev. And the status of Turkomans changes from being a Russian proxy to neutral. So we eliminate all Russian control markers. Now the British play the sole action of the card to march four British strength points from Delhi to Sindh in Baluchistan. To joins Roberts force now that will have a total of five strength points. Now it's the Russians fifth round and they had selected their emissary card and they will play it first for the event. And the Russians will target Giotepi and they will send an emissary there. And they select Simonich. So Simonich is transferred to Giotepi and now Let's see if the British have a spoiler card to play. They do and they will. So the British can transfer one officer to Giok Tepi. They already have the flashman there and they will designate himself. So the Russians need a five. There's a plus one for Simonich's diplomacy rating but a minus two for flashman's. The roll is a 4 modified to a 3, so Simonich fails in his mission and he is eliminated and Turkomans remains neutral for now. Now the Russians play the action of the card to march Skobelev once again into Tashkent. And he has 8 strength points and the Russians roll first. A 5 modified to a 2, 8 minus 2 is 6, so the fortress loses 6 strength points, but it only had 2 left. So Tashkent falls, and so does all of Kokand to the Russians. And we place Russian control markers and discontent markers on the three spaces of Tashkent. And the roll of 11 modified to 13 produces no attrition losses. And that's the end of the Russian fifth round. Now we move on to the end of decade phase. And we will show only those officers that roll odd results and have to be removed. Skobelev is gone. And Kaufman leaves also. The last Russian officer on the map, Stolyatov, also leaves the game. So the Russians have no more officers on the board. Cavalgadi leaves. And so does Roberts. And Flashman is also gone. So of all the officers on the map, only Abbott, who is currently at Merv, remains. Let's take a look now at the victory point score. Russia's three home spaces give it three victory points. Plus two for Kiva. Plus three for Bokara, and we're at eight. And three more for Tashkent, and the Russians have a total of 11 victory points. Now let's see how many the British have. The four spaces in the British Raj give the British four victory points. Plus three for Baluchistan is seven. Plus four for Punjab is 11. Afghanistan provides three more for 14. 
and we add Herat and Merv in the Turk commands for a total of 16 victory points. So we see that in a decade where the Russians had a considerable number of forces and strength points and officers, they lost a margin in victory points, especially losing Afghanistan has uh, swayed the tide in favor of the British. So it is currently 16 to 11. Kashgaria still remains close to each of the sides. Turkomans is up for grabs. So stick around for the last turn, turn six, the 1880s in the great game. This is Tuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.